Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a radical equation. We have the square root of 144 minus x squared equals 13 minus the square root of 25 minus x squared. And we're going to be solving for x values. So I'll be presenting two methods and let's start with the first one. My first method actually involves getting rid of the radicals by squaring both sides. It's already in good shape because we have the radicals on different sides. Let's square both sides and we can actually, to make our life a little easier, we can go ahead and replace x squared with something like a di different variable since we don't have any x's. We can go ahead and call this t. This will also be t, right? And now we're going to get something like this. The square root of 144 minus t equals 13 minus the square root of 25 minus t. And now again, let's square both sides and do the same thing. When we square, we're going to get rid of the radical on the left, 144 minus t equals, here we have the square of a difference, 169 from a squared plus b squared minus 2ab is going to give us 26 times the radical. And of course, we can go ahead and simplify this a little bit more, minus t cancels out. So we kind of end up with a single, um, I was going to say quadratic, but it's a radical, the opposite. So we can go ahead and put that on the left. And here we have 169 plus 25, but we can also think of it as 169 minus 144, which is 25 plus 25, and that will be a 50. See, it's a little easier if you subtract first. And then we're going to divide both sides by 26. That's going to give us the square root of 25 minus t equals 50 divided by 26, which is the same as 25 over 13. That 13 you're going to see a lot as denominators. And now we can go ahead and square both sides one more time. That's what is done with radical equations. But we have to be careful because we might be introducing extraneous solutions. We also have to back substitute, okay? But here we get 25 minus t equals, if you square that, you're going to get 625 divided by 169. Great, let's go ahead and switch these around. So t is going to be 25 minus 625 over 169. Awesome. Something that would help here, because these numbers are going to get larger, is the following. We can go ahead and multiply these first, or write it as a product rather, divide by that. And now we can go ahead and factor out a 25 because that is a common factor. And that's, that's going to give us 169 minus 25, which is a perfect square by the way, because that is 144. You see how helpful that is? And now if you remember, t is a perfect square, right? And that's just perfect. Now remember t is x squared, right? We call that. So we can go ahead and now replace t with x squared. So back substitute, set it equal to x squared. Obviously, we didn't say anything about x being positive or negative, right? So we have to consider both solutions. And in this case, if you square root both sides, you can basically do the following. You can square root every number here, right? It's just gonna be the square root of a fraction times the square root of another fraction. So it's going to be like 5 times 12 because the square root of 25 is 5, the square root of 144 is 12, and the square root of 169 is 13. And that gives us the answer nicely, at least one of the answers, 60 over 13. Great. Now, how do you find the other value of x? Well, just consider the negative square root. By the way, I'm not saying the square root of a real number is negative and positive, but it only has one value. But if you put a minus sign in front of the square root of something, in other words, if x squared equals a, then x is plus minus the square root of a, as long as a is greater than zero, right? And in this case, it is. So we also have negative 60 over 13 as a solution to this equation. So it looks like there are two solutions, but guess what? We have to check our work and plug it in. Let's do it. We have the square root of 144 minus x squared equals 13 minus the square root of 25 minus x, x squared. Obviously, uh, being able to replace x squared with t helped a lot. Uh, if we had an x squared and an x, that would be a very different story. But here, 
If you replace x with 60 over 30, by the way, you don't have to check both values because their squares are equal. So you only have to plug in one. And let's just do this one, 60 over 13. If you square that, you're gonna get the following number. Again, we're gonna use factoring, don't worry about it. Let's go ahead and evaluate the left-hand side. And we can basically write this as 144 times 169 minus 3,600 divided by 169. And we're hoping to get a perfect square from here. This is 12 times 12. This is gonna be 12 times 300. And obviously 12 and three goes into 300, right? And that should probably go 25 times. So it's kind of like 12 times, 12 times 25. So I can basically take out 12 times 12, which is at 144. And that would give me 169 minus 25. Again, that magical number that, uh, appears. And now we get the square root of 144 times the 144. That's 12 times 12 divided by 13. And that will be 144 over 13. And that's supposed to equal the right hand side. So this is the left hand side. Let's evaluate the right hand side to see if we're gonna get the same thing. So 13 minus the square root of 25 minus x squared. But guess what? We already know what x squared is. It is this number, 3600 divided by 169. And if you make a common denominator again, 25 times 169 minus 3,600 all over 169, and I'm gonna square root and subtract from 13, and that should match the first value we found. But here again, this is going to be 25 times 144. Notice that there's a shortcut which I could probably tell you a little bit about. If you uh, divide by 100 and multiply by four, you're basically dividing it by 25. Make sense? Okay. So this gives us 25 times uh, 169 minus 144 over 169. And then we're gonna square root and subtract from 13. This is gonna be 25 times 25. So it's gonna be like 13 minus five times five over 13. And that will be 169 minus 25 over 13. And that will be 144 over 13. And notice that it's the exact same value that we got from the left hand side. So the right hand side and the left hand side agrees, which means which means both solutions are valid, right? Great. Let's go ahead and take a look at the second method, which is actually much more interesting. You probably noticed that there is something geometric about this problem, right? So it's kind of like an algebra and geometry together. Isn't that cool? We haven't done geometry for a while. But anyways, so here's what we're going to do. First of all, how did I come up with something like this, right? So we're going to call this expression A and call this expression B. So what does that give us? That gives us 144 minus X squared equals A squared or X squared plus A squared equals 144. Great. And then here we get X squared plus B squared equals, if you think about it, uh, 25 minus X squared is gonna be B squared. So X squared plus B squared is gonna be 25. So now notice that in this triangle, we can kind of use the Pythagorean theorem twice because X is the height, by the way, this is a 90 degree angle. And then we can kind of call this length, which is obviously this seems to be longer like A and this seems to be B. And the hypotenuse is gonna be at 12 because notice that if you square root both sides, you get the hypotenuse and in the other right triangle, you get the five. And then you just realize, uh-oh, this is like, wait a minute, what does this mean? It means A plus B equals 13 from this equation. So this sum is 13, which means the base is 13, 12, 5, 13. Does that ring a bell? Yes, this is also a right triangle. Therefore, we are dealing with Euclidean triangles. Anyways, Euclid came up with some formulas, which are really cool. But how do you find X from here? Obviously, there's a lot of different ways. You can use similarity, so on and so forth. But I'm going to give you a really cool way to solve it. And here's how it is. Evaluate, and I'm going to call this triangle A, B, C. Uh oh, I don't want to delete it. A, B, and C. So area of A, B, C can be written in two ways. Base times X divided by 2 or 12 times 5 divided by 2 because those are perpendicular, right? 2 cancels out. 13 times X is 13X equals 60. X equals 60 divided by 13. This actually, this was a formula that I kind of came up with on my own when I was in high school. 
and I got so excited, like, yes, I, I invented a formula, but that, that was already found. Anyways, that's a little bit of history. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care and bye-bye.